So, in this uh, lecture, I will discuss about how we can design uh, various foundation, shallow foundations like isolated footing or wrap foundation resting on clay or the sand. So, but remember that when we are talking about design, so I will not discuss about the structural design of the foundation. So, I will not discuss about the reinforcement design or the detailing of the foundation. Here, design means that I will discuss only the geotechnical uh, design or the consideration of the foundation design means that I will discuss about the dimension of the footing and where I will place that footing. That means, the depth of foundation and the dimension of the foundation. So, that the load that is coming on this foundation, that foundation can carry that load. So, before I going for this design part. So, Till now, I have discussed the bearing capacity calculation of foundation and the settlement calculation of foundation separately. So, as I mentioned that there is a term allowable bearing capacity of the foundation. So, this allowable bearing capacity of the foundation means that the maximum load or the stress a footing can take in terms of bearing capacity criteria and the maximum load or stress a footing can take in, term, uh, 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 in terms of settlement criteria, then minimum of this stress or load will be the allowable bearing capacity of the foundation. So, we have to satisfy both the criteria, and based on that the minimum stress will be the allowable bearing capacity of the foundation or bearing capacity that can be applied on the soil such that following two criteria are satisfied. As I mentioned, these what are these two criteria that adequate factor safety with respect to the shearing failure and settlement within the permissible limit are satisfied. So, it is most of the cases it is observed that the settlement criteria always govern this uh, allowable bearing capacity. Uh, unless the footing is very narrow or the strip and or the soil is loose. Otherwise, most of the cases that we will find the settlement criteria will govern this allowable bearing capacity. So, but the before I start the design part, so we will also that if we have we can also determine the net allowable bearing capacity based on the in situ test data. So, that means, here we can see and these things are applicable for granular soil. As I mentioned that this in situ test are all useful for the granular soil, because in the clay soil here this in situ test, because the clay behavior is long term, but this in situ test are short term test. So, there you may not get the proper behavior of the clay into this uh, in situ test value. In other way, in the clay we can collect the undisturbed soil sample. So, in the clay it is easy to collect the undisturbed soil sample. So, we can collect the undisturbed soil sample, we bring it into lab, test it, get the properties. So, those properties we can use for the in the theories which is available to calculate the bearing capacities in terms of bearing capacity or allowable bearing capacity in terms of settlement as well as the uh, bearing. But in case of sand, because of collection of undisturbed soil sample is difficult. So, that is why we can go for this in situ test data, which is uh, we where we can directly use this in situ test data and get the net allowable bearing capacity. The first expression that I am giving, it is the net allowable bearing capacity is given by this equation. Okay. So, this equation is 0.44 C w is the correction factor due to water table into S A. S A is the permissible settlement and remember that if you use this expression, this will be ton per meter square. So, it is generally used for the isolated foundation for the wrap foundation, we will use this expression which is 0 0.088 C W N S A if your N value is within this limit. And what is C W? C W is the water table correction. So, if d w is the, so that means here again I am writing that if is 
the ground surface. So, this is the foundation. So, your water table position is up to B, after that there is no effect of water table. So, uh, this is D F depth of foundation. So, your D W is calculated from here. So, if the water table is somehow here, then depth of found uh, water table will be the D W. Okay. So, this corrections we can apply here. So, these two the water table correction and A C is the permissible settlement. So, what is the permissible settlement based on that we have to determine the net allowable bearing capacity. So, uh, in the next one this mayor of corrections the previous corrections were given by Peck, Hanson and Thorvan in 1974 and the next uh, correlations is given. Uh, by mayor of 1974. So, there also this is this 0 0.049 n r d into s a and these correlations all are empirical correlations. So, based on the observations they have proposed these correlations. So, that is why these are called the empirical uh, correlations. So, that means here also ton per meter square in terms of kilo newton this will be the correlations. If it is your B width of the foundation is less than 1.2 meter, if it is greater than 1.2 meter, then you have to use these correlations. And these are the all factor, this is the in this correlations already this depth factor, water table factors are included and this is for the depth factors and so depth factor is given if D means the depth of foundation. So, we can write this is D F depth of foundation is uh, less than uh, 1 plus d f by b. So, less than equal to 1.2 and this is 1 plus d f by b less than equal to 1.33. What does it what does it mean? It means that if this value is coming greater than 1.2. So, we cannot take greater than 1.2 the maximum limit of this r d 1 depth factor correction is 1.2 and the maximum limit of R d 2 is 1.33. So, remember that that R d 2 R d 1 cannot be greater than 1.2 and R d 2 cannot be greater than 1.33, Well, this is the limit. So, if the depth is very high, so that you have to restrict this value is 1.2 and 1.33. So, that is the limit it is given. And here also permissible settlement in millimeter, n is the SPT blows and b is the width of foundation in meter. Remember that as these correlations which is uh, uh, in the mayor of or the Peck, uh, Hansen and Thorban. So, all these correlations uh, are empirical correlations. So, the unit that is mentioned here you have to specifically follow this unit all the case otherwise you cannot use this correlation. So, remember that when you use this correlation this unit you have to specifically follow uh, uh, when you are putting this value. And then uh, there is term S is the permissible settlement and N is the SPT blows and so the um, uh, N is the SPT blows and remember that this S P T blow. So, R D 1 I will get from here, R D 2 I will get. So, this is the R D 1, R D 2 and N is the S P T blow and this S P T blow is the corrected uh, N value. So, remember that there in few cases in this empirical expression you will find this is called N field. N field means the observe without any corrections okay? and N means it is corrected. So, in sometimes you will find the N without applying the overburden pressure that means it is uncorrected. So, that means the measured value that you are getting from the field you may have to apply directly or after the correction depending upon which way it is been represented. So, here it is n means it is corrected and here uh, the another correction correlations is given by Teng in 1962 where also this is the n value which is corrected, but n field which is the measured. So, C n is the correction factor. So, C n is this correction factor, this is the measured. So, n phi means measured. So, C n is the correction factor. 
So, I have discussed this correction factor due when I discuss about the SPT. So, these are the overburden corrections or dilatancy correction depending upon which code you are using or then it can be other corrections also. So, here C n is the correction factor. So, I will discuss later on what is how we will get the C n value. So, here this expression B is the width of foundation in meter. Again, I am telling you keep in mind these units. Then C d is the depth correction factor, S a is the permissible settlement in millimeter and this is the n corrected S b t value. This is in this equation is in terms of ton per meter square, this is in terms of kilo Newton per meter square. So, now how I will get this C d? C d is the again 1 plus d f by b, again C d cannot be greater than 2. So, if the maximum value is restricted as 2 and C n this correction factor is this is p 0 bar for if p 0 is less than 1.05. So, remember that this is in terms of k g per centimeter square again this is in terms of k g per centimeter square if it is within that range and this range is sufficient for a shallow foundation within the influence zone. So, that is why it is given within that zone. So, th this way we can this is effective overburden stress in k g per centimeter square. So, remember that if you are using this expression you have to follow this unit again I am telling okay, you, you the, the way it is represented you have to follow and here this is the R w dash. So, this R w dash uh, value was this R w dash value was given here. So, this is the water table correction. So, how I will get the R w dash previous one if it is R w then the water table is measured from the be, uh, from the G L and if it is R w dash then the water table is measured from the base of the foundation. So, that means, if it is D w dash. So, that means, if it is foundation because this thing this is the G L or ground level this is the base of foundation D f. So, and this is the B up to which the water table effect is there. So, if it is your water table is here. So, you have to measure d w dash from the base of the foundation. So, in that case if your water table is as the base and above then r w dash will be 0.5 and if it is below that base of the uh, footing then you have to use this expression. Okay? So, this is the w dash is this one and then and it cannot be greater than 1 again this is restricted as 1. So, these are the all empirical expression by which you can directly calculate what would be the net allowable bearing capacity of a foundation. That means, here uh, as I mentioned most of the cases the settlement criteria is governed. So, these are permissible settlements. So, based on the settlement. So, that is why if you use them you can directly calculate what will be net bearing uh, net uh, allowable bearing pressure of the foundation. So, now, uh, uh, so now we are talking about that we are talking about the. So, that means, uh, now we have discussed the bearing capacity and we have discussed the settlement and then we are talking about the permissible settlement, permissible settlement. What is permissible settlement? So, permissible settlement that uh, in, in different uh, codes as given what would be the permissible that means, your settlement will be maximum for a particular foundation. So, you cannot design your foundation more than this value of settlement. So, that means, you have to restrict your foundation settlement within that limit. So, that is the permissible settlement. So, here as I mentioned that we are basically in the first class of the settlement that we have uh, total settlement, we have differential settlement or the angular distortion and we have the tilt. So, tilt that if the total building is settled. So, that generally is not uh, given in this chart. So, the things that generally we follow are that these are the permissible value. So, for the isolated footing or if sand or hard clay then for the steel structure your maximum permissible value is 50 millimeter. This is as per IS code and for the RCC structure it is also 50 millimeter and for the differential settlement is 
point zero zero three three L and for the RCC is point zero zero one five L. But if it is on clay, plastic clay means the soft clay, or then this value is fifty millimeter for steel structure and RCC structure it is 75 millimeter and these are the other values angular distortion and differential settlement. And if it is rough foundation or rigid foundation, then we can go for higher settlement. So, this value is 75 uh, say millimeter for RCC and for the steel both and for the plastic clay it is 100 for RCC and the uh, for the steel structure. And here remember that this L value is the length of the deformed part of wall or the lapped or the centers to center distance between the column. So, it is the deformed part of the wall or the wrapped or the center to center between two columns. So, that means, if there is a difference settlement of two columns you are measuring for isolated footing, then it will be difference between the two columns center to center or if it is a wrapped where there is a differential settlement in uh, two parts of the wrap, then the distance between two portion is will be the L. Okay. So, now what we will do that we will saw now design, um, we will design the foundation. So, first uh, problem that I have taken that determine the net allowable bearing capacity, sometime it is called allowable bearing capacity also or pressure of a square footing of size 3 cross 3 meter resting on sand with the following properties. What are the uh, following properties? So, this is the n value and uh, remember that this is the corrected n value is given with the depth wise. Okay? So, suppose we have a foundation we have the foundation. So, this is the ground surface and we have the foundation. So, this is the base of foundation and here the depth of foundation is given 1.5 meter. So, this is plus 0 meter, this is, this is the depth of foundation is minus 1.5 meter. Okay? And uh, this is the D F, D F is given is 1.5 meter. So, this is the foundation and at different depth, suppose it is if it is minus 2.2 meter, then minus 3 meter and so on. So, up to say minus 9 meter. So, and the corresponding n value for all the depth wise. So, it is the n value is given is a 75 centimeter interval. So, this is 1.5 meter it is 16, then 2.25 meter it is 22, then for 3 it is 20 and for 9 it is 40. So, these are the n values and these are the depth wise n values. Okay? Now, what a table location is given at a depth of say, so 1 meter from the base of the footing. So, total water table location is say 2.5 meter. So, if it is in terms of d w, so our d w, this is d w. So, d w is 2.5 meter. Okay. So, now the water table is located 2.5 meter from the ground surface, that means 1 meter from the base of the footing depth of foundation in one point. Permissible settlement is 50 millimeter and factor of safety against bearing is 2.5 factor safety. So, that, that means, we have to check in terms of bearing as well as in terms of settlement and then we will see what would be the uh, net allowable bearing capacity or pressure that we have to determine. So, first of all that, uh, first we are checking that uh, for the settlement uh, part and then uh, okay, uh, first we are checking the bearing part or then we will go for the settlement part then we will check it. So, first we are checking for the bearing part. Okay. So, bearing capacity consideration. So, and when you are talking about bearing, so we have to take the influence zone up to B. So, for the bearing part, influence zone is 
is B. So, here the B is the square foundation. So, B is 3 meter. So, it is is equal to 3 meter. So, the influence zone is from 1.5 to 4.5. So, this is the influence zone for the bearing up to 4.5. So, what we are taking? We are taking the average in value of this total influence zone. So, average there are 5 in value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up to 4.5 because that is 3 meter is my influence zone. So, average in value will be 16 plus 22 plus 20 plus 27 plus 29 divided by 5. So, that value is 22.8 or equal to 23. So, average in value is 20. So, if the average in value is 23, then we can use the in net ultimate expression because it, here in value is given. So, we can use the net ultimate expression that was given during the bearing capacity um, uh, calculation. So, you go to your previous uh, class lecture, then you will find that net ultimate expression was given by thing in 1962. So, that expression was given where we can calculate the net ultimate bearing capacity based on n value. So, that means, this is net ultimate. Okay? So, that means, here that expression was given for the isolated footing is 1 by 1, 1 by 3 n square b r w dash plus b 100 plus n square d f into r w. Okay? So, this is the expression. So, and the so value I am getting that 1 by 3 n is 23 square b is 2 meter uh, sorry 3 meter and r w is 0.65. So, I am showing how the I am getting r w dash plus b again 3 meter, then 100 plus n is 23 square into d f is 1.5 into r w is 1. Okay? So, these are coming out to be 1, 2, 8, 7.4 kilo Newton per meter square. Okay? So, remember that we have two part 0 0.6 and 1. So, I will explain how I am getting these two value because I have the curve in the next page. So, but it is the net ultimate. So, from here ultimate net ultimate is 2 uh, this value and we have a factor of safety is 2.5. So, the q net safe q net safe is equal to q net ultimate divided by 2.5, which is the factor of safety. So, that is equal to 1287.4 divided by 2.5. So, it is equal to 515 kilo Newton per meter square. So, we have a value of 515 kilo Newton per meter square that we are getting from the bearing capacity consideration. Okay? So, we are getting 515 from bearing capacity consideration. Now, uh, so let me explain these things that I am using these uh, expression. Uh, sorry. Uh, So, I am using uh, these, this is for the strip footing. So, our case is square footing. So, that is why I am using these expression. Okay? So, there is two terms R w dash and R w. So, these two terms. So, um, and depth of the footing is if 
d f is greater than b, we are taking d f equal to b, but our case d f is uh, less than b, because b is 3 meter, d f is 1.5 meter. So, it is ok. And so, uh, net bearing capacity is kilo Newton per meter square that we have taken. So, and the uh, so, but these are the two values R w, uh, R w and R w dash. So, from here I am getting. So, what is R w? R w we are getting that uh, R w uh, we are getting that here d w d w divided by d f. So, this is d w by d f corresponding is r w. So, d w is by d f is equal to is always it is uh, this is 2.5 and this is 1.5. So, that means, here it is always greater than 1. So, if it is greater than 1, so this will be this is remember that this value is 1, this is not 1.9. So, this value is 1. So, this basically your d f is this one is d f that this is the as I mentioned this is that your water table is here which is 1 point below the ground surface and your d f is 1.5 meter and d w is this is d w d w is 2 point 5 meter. And always remember that if your d w is greater than d f that means, water table is below uh, base of the foundation then the above soil will not be affected. So, that is why if this value is greater than 1. So, that means, if d w by d f is greater than 1 then always r w is equal to 1 because you can see this is given up to 1. So, it is always 1. So, r w that is why 1, but your d w dash by b. So, what is d w dash? So, from the base of the footing to the water table that is d w dash. So, here d w dash is equal to 1 meter. So, this will be 1 divided by 3. So, this is 0.33. So, the if this is 0.33 will be somewhere here. So, if I go to here. So, and this value is around point this is uh, your uh, this is actually this is 3 3 will be somewhere here. So, this value is 0.65. So, actual value is this one. So, if your this is point 6 1. So, your r w dash is 0 0.65. So, this curve you can use for r w as well as r w dash depending upon which value you are taking d w by d f or d w dash by b. So, if this d w by d f is greater than 1 or any value even d w dash by b also if greater than 1 then also it is 1. So, which means is d w by b greater than 1, it means that that your water table is below uh, the base at a depth of greater than b. So, that means water table effect is not there. If there is no water table effect, then these values are 1, okay, this correction, because there is no correction basically if I take the 1. Otherwise, it will be the less than 1, because in bearing capacity it is less than 1, it will reduce the bearing capacity, because your water will give you a negative effect. So, that is why we have used R w dash 0 0.65 and R w as a 1 in the previous equation. And from there, we find the Q net safe is 515 kilo Newton per meter square. Now, next one what we will do? that okay, we have used the bearing capacity consideration. Now, I will use the settlement consideration. Okay. ok. 
okay in the settlement calculation consideration here n value is given so i can use the n value chart to calculate the settlement and then we from there we can go for the bearing capacity so here what we are doing that here we have a n value now when we have a uh, okay so from this chart we will go for th this values that uh, for the settlement we can go that here the your influence zone will be twice b because it is settlement consideration okay in the bearing configuration influence zone you have taken up to b so it is influence zone is is twice b so your this will be 2 into 3 meter so this will be up to 6 meter so it will go from minus 1.5 meter to minus 7.5 meter okay so if settlement consideration it will go to minus 1.5 meter to minus 1.75 meter so that will be the influence zone now if i go back to my original problem that where this is the n value again so here now the influence zone is point 1.5 to your 6 meters 7.5 so this is now the influence zone up to here so the again in average values are this is nine values so 16 plus 22 plus 20 plus 27 plus 29 plus 30 plus 32 plus 32 plus 33 divided by 9. So, my influence n value is 27. So, now my n average is 27, b value is 3 meter. So, let us go to the curve. So, n value is 27, b value is 3 meter. Now, let us go to the curve. Okay. So, this is the curve where my n b value is here b is the width of the footing, b value is 3 meter and n value is 27. So, it will be around here. So, my so this is the point 27, this is the n, this is the 25 is the n value and this is 30 is the n value. So, it is in between these two. So, this is around this is the corresponding settlement. Okay. So, the corresponding settlement from the chart so from the chart your that your settlement for 1 kg per centimeter square is equal to or 100 kilo newton per meter square. So, here it is per kg per centimeter square. So, the settlement that we are getting for the 10, this is for 10 to the power minus 2 per kg per centimeter square, that is the settlement 10 to the power minus 2 per kg per centimeter square, it is in meter. Okay. So, in millimeter, it will be 10 millimeter per kg per centimeter square. Okay. So, for per kg per centimeter square, it has 10 millimeter settlement. So, for 100 kilo Newton per meter square, the settlement you are getting 10 millimeter. Okay or you can write for 1 kg per centimeter square the settlement is 10 millimeter or for 100 kilo newton per millimeter meter square settlement is 10 millimeters okay because your 
10 millimeter we are getting it is 10 to the power minus 2 in meter. So, in uh, millimeter it will be 10 millimeter because this is 10 to the power minus 2 meter for per kg 1 kg per centimeter square. Okay. So, that means per 1 kg per centimeter square your settlement is 10 millimeter or for 100 kilo Newton per millimeter square your settlement is 10 millimeter, but your permissible settlement is. So, my permissible settlement is settlement is 50 millimeter. Okay. Now, so this is the 10 millimeter settlement and we have a water table corrections also. Okay. So, now we have to apply the water table correction and then based on that we have to determine the based on this permissible settlement we have to determine what would be the allowable bearing capacity. Okay. So, these things I will discuss today I am finishing here and in the this part I will finish this problem in the next class because here based on the bearing capacity calculation our, our net safe load is coming 515 kilo Newton per meter square. And settlement consideration I am getting that for 100 kilo Newton per meter square stress the settlement will be 10 millimeter or you can so you can say for the 10 millimeter settlement we will get for 100 kilo Newton per meter square stress. Now, in the that means for what I will get for to get a 50 millimeter settlement okay? and we have to apply the water table correction. Okay? So, next class I will finish this problem and then I will also introduce the direct net allowable bearing capacity calculation part also. Thank you.